kick it off today with Claire B. Lane. Go ahead, Claire. Thank you, Eric. What a race it was at Darlington. I mean, just unbelievable. Why do you think so much attrition happened amongst the playoff drivers? And what do you make of, of your race at Darlington? It was certainly crazy. Yeah, I, I honestly can't. Uh, explain the the amount of attrition between the the playoff drivers, but it does seem to happen um, when we get to the playoffs. Uh, we see it time and time again where um, you know playoff drivers end up with uh, you know bad races and find themselves in a hole. And I guess uh, I guess it's it's just the way it works, and it creates a lot of excitement for TV and and the sport in general. Um, seeing guys trying to dig out of holes to to make it to the next round of the playoffs, but uh, as, as far as our race goes, um, we overcame uh, some adversity for sure. We had some things not go our way, um, late race cautions and, and uh, a flat tire or a tire going down and several different things um, just, you know, popping up happening uh, that we had to overcome. And, and so for us, getting out of there with a 16th place finish and, and being three points above the cut line, while not ideal, um, especially with a car that was capable of running anywhere from 7th to 10th, most of the night, um, we didn't take ourselves out. We, we kept fighting, kept, uh, kept grinding away all night. It was a long race, 500 miles at Darlington is a long, long race, but to, uh, to get out of there with a decent night, um, scored some stage points and, uh, found ourselves, you know, leaving Darlington three points above the cut line is, is, uh, is a, is a good spot to go to these next two weeks that are good tracks for us. So headed to Richmond, right? And there always is intensity in the playoffs, but man, we just kicked it out with a powder with a powder keg, I guess, you know. So what do you what do you expect at Richmond then? Uh, more of the same. It's gonna be it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be intense. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of you know battling, and and I have uh, you know I have I have no doubt that you will see uh, a playoff car or a couple or a few. Uh, run into some trouble it just happens and uh, you just you just don't want to be that guy and you know we've been fortunate uh, going to Richmond in years past uh, especially in the playoffs where we've always had good cars we've run in the top five scored a lot of stage points and and, and had good finishes so that's been uh, one of our best racetracks and we're taking the same car that we won at Loudon with so um, hopefully we can produce a similar result thanks for your time appreciate it good luck thank thanks. you Okay, our next question will come from Bob Pockers. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, Eric, just how much has changed since the last Richmond, or do you view this Richmond as pretty much who was good then, you know, earlier this year should be good now? Yeah, it's, it's hard to say because, um, you know, I feel like Richmond doesn't change, but uh, everybody – always seems to find a way to get better, right? So you can't rest on your laurels. If you were good at Richmond last time, you can't just automatically assume that you're going to, um, you know, beat the competition. Everybody's always looking to find ways to make their their cars better from the last race. And, um, you know, you, you even see that just looking at Darlington. I know that the the patch was, you know, an, an added um, difference and, and something new about Darlington. But you go back and look at the spring race and look at the cars that ran good and, then you, you look at this race and, and there was some different cars um, running up front. So, yeah, I think, um, you know, the race teams, the organizations, everybody works hard to find more speed in their cars, more downforce, all of those things. So uh, that usually uh, equates to, um, you know, stiffer competition and we're in the playoffs. So everybody brings their A game. Um, so I have no doubt that even though we've run good at Richmond and we ran good there in the spring, um, we're still fine tuning and tweaking on what we had there in the past to, uh, to try and make it a race winning car instead of a top five car. And how much do you pay attention to what's going on in Daytona with the next gen test? Like, are you going to text Cole tonight and say, Hey, what, how, what was it like? Or will you make sure to try to find him this weekend and ask him about it? Or maybe if you just run into him at some point over the next few weeks, do you ask him about it? Yeah, I honestly am paying zero attention. I am not a good multitasker. Um, and so for me right now, um, to, to be the best that I can be, I am just totally focused on on the playoffs and really focused on Richmond this week. Um, and that's the approach I've always taken. 
um, when it comes playoff time, I, I focus on one week at a time. And, you know, last week I was totally focused on Darlington. This week I'll be totally focused on Richmond. And I'm not even worried about Bristol. So I can't be worried about next-gen racing um, if, if, you know, if my focus is right now on, on Richmond. Thank you. Okay. Our next question is going to come from Dustin Wong. Go ahead, Dustin. Thanks. Um, Eric, you, you've talked about how you felt like the season kind of turned for you with the, the performance at Nashville and things really kind of picked up uh, at that point. But obviously you had that top 10 at, at Richmond and that was kind of the one bright spot in that uh, tough uh, opening stretch. What actually, you know, what went so right other than that being a good track for you guys? What was the bright spot there that made Richmond so such a, a good performance in that stretch where things just weren't going your way earlier this season? Yeah, yeah. Um... I do feel like, uh, you know, going to Richmond uh, this time around, I, I have so much confidence because I didn't feel like our cars were where they needed to be earlier this year. And yet we still went to Richmond um, and ran in the top 10 and, and finished seventh, like you said. So to, to, to go there and run like we did in the spring where I felt like our cars were still off, especially, um, you know, the 750 stuff at, that we've made significant gains on. Um, it, it gives me a lot of confidence knowing that we ran well um, there in the spring and, and that we're going back with um, a lot better race car. And um, it's a place that we just, for whatever reason, I don't know why, but I always run good there. Um, doesn't matter the team or crew chief or whatever. I, I always show up to Richmond and, and tend to run well there. Very similar to, to Loudon. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited about it. It's, um, it's a great place for us. It's Smithfield's backyard, um, so it always it always feels good to go up there and run good. And then um, this weekend in particular, uh, we're running a, a really cool special paint scheme uh, to honor and, and remember, um, you know, 20 years ago, 9-11. So um, pretty excited about this weekend on all fronts. Also, I want to ask you a little bit different, uh, Bent. Um, to go back to your first cup start, uh, I know it's been a while and it was – uh, Vegas uh, actually was, I think, the number 80 car for, for Gibbs. Um, what do you remember about um, the feelings, the experiences going into that event? Um, I know it didn't last as long as you would have liked that day, but I mean, was it a case where like, you know, do you feel like, hey, this is my one shot or, you know, the nerves and anxiety and just what it meant to get to that level and have that opportunity? Yeah, I remember it being uh, an extremely nerve wracking weekend. Um, we were going there with, a, with an R&D car, um, kind of experimenting for Gibbs at the time. I remember that uh, back then you had to qualify your way in um, when you came as a, you know, a non, uh, you know, top 35 in points car. And back then they used to get 48 cars, 50 cars trying to qualify for 43 spots. Um, and Vegas was one that everybody wanted to go run because the purse was, was big. Um, and so if you made it at Vegas, it was, uh, it was a good, a good payday and it was a great place, uh, for Gibbs to go and, and try and experiment and work on, um, some new technology and new setups. So I remember being a nervous wreck and, um, I remember qualifying in and feeling like the weight of the world was lifted off of me. And then I remember waking up race day morning, feeling like the weight of the world was right back on me. Um, and I just remember being really nervous, um, just wanting to go and perform and, and, and run well um, to just kind of prove that I, I belong. And uh, I remember being really devastated, um, you know, that, that we wrecked and, and the race didn't go really um, how I envisioned or hoped it would. Thank you. Yep. Okay, our next question will come from Adam. Go ahead, Adam. Hi, Eric. Thanks for your time today. Uh, the trouble some of the playoff drivers face, do you see that as a product of too much aggression or just some bad luck? And do you think it's better to be aggressive and go for the win at all costs or to try and avoid some of that trouble and point your way into the next round? Yeah, that's certainly a balance. Um, but if you look historically over you know, over the last several years, the first round is, is definitely a round that you've got to survive. Um, you know, winning obviously makes it way easier, uh, but surviving is, is key because on, on, you know, any given year you look back, um, 
at least two or three cars end up taking themselves out just from uh, one or two bad races, wrecks, blown engines, whatever it is. So, um, yeah, when you when you look at the first round, it is about surviving. And you have to be aggressive, though. It's, it's such a balancing act between, um, you know, not making mistakes and, and don't wreck, don't take yourself out. But at the same time, you got to race for every point. Um, you know, every single stage point matters. Every single point and in, in position on the racetrack uh, at the end of the race matters. So um, it really is uh, a tough challenge and, and a balancing act between being aggressive to, to go get the spots that you uh, need to go get and making sure that you don't, uh, you know, put yourself in, in a bad position to, to get tore up and have a DNF. Awesome. Thanks. Good luck this weekend. Thanks. All right. And Eric, I'm going to read a question here from a media member that was unable to make um, it on the Zoom at this time. But the question is related to 9-11, which you referenced earlier um, in one of your answers is, you know, it's a few days from the 20th anniversary of 9-11. Can you remember back to where you were that day? And what do you remember from that day and the impact it had on you? Yeah, I remember exactly um, where I was that day. I was a uh, senior in high school and I was in drafting class. I was, I was uh, in an architectural engineering class and I was uh, drawing on graph paper. And I remember our teacher um, got a phone call or got notified. Uh, I don't remember exactly how he got notified, but he got notified and he turned on the little tube TV um, that was mounted up on a wall bracket in the classroom and put the news on. And we all put our pencils down and just sat there in shock. Um, couldn't believe what we were witnessing. And uh, I remember it being very somber in the classroom and just a lot of um, emotion and everybody was very quiet and just glued to the TV trying to figure out what was going on. And uh, shortly after that, um, we all got dismissed from school. Um, if you drove to school, you could leave and um, Otherwise, you had to wait for the buses to come um, or your parents to come pick you up. But I was a senior in high school. I drove, so um, I was able to, to hop in my truck and, and drive home. And I just remember um, getting home as fast as I could and, and turning the news back on, um, you know, trying to understand and wrap my head around uh, the tragic events that had happened that day. Awesome. Well, thank you so much um, for your time this morning. We wish you the best of luck this weekend in um, Richmond and um, have a good rest of the week. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. And thank you to all the media who joined.